hello there you artsy ant eaters welcome to today's video i wanted to hop on and explain and announce the new salt new york product the artist adjusters if you are following us on instagram then you've probably seen some of what's going on but basically i had a stroke of genius again and i made something new and so in this video i'm going to show you guys how i use the artist adjusters and how you might use them for makeup artists and for people that love to just just control every little fucking part of their makeup i think this is something really special and i'm really excited to bring it to you guys the artist adjusters were born of my love for and agonizing over mixing colors for you guys it's my favorite part of running salt is making the new colors. Mixing colors is my passion. One of them, I love coming up with new colors. I love making things just like the exact perfect color that it should be. However, every time I make a new color, I experience heartbreak because every single version of a color is so pretty to me. So when I'm mixing something and I'm like, there's a, every gradient possible I love. I explained this also in the Instagram video I did, but basically I love when there's a little bit more yellow or a little bit more blue and also, you know, my tan fluctuates. So sometimes I want my bronzer a little lighter or a little darker. Sometimes I want it a little cooler, or a little warmer. And I feel the same way about foundations as well. So I can't come out with a million colors because it would be not sustainable for me as a person who makes them and for the environment. I don't like it when brands come out with a lot of products over and over again, especially a lot of really similar products where it'd be like, there's a bunch of this color and it's all very similar because it is disorienting to me as a consumer. I'm now just pretty much repeating the Instagram video, but I know not, not everybody has Instagram. Anyway, it's disorienting as a consumer to pick out from a bunch of very similar shades. And then it's also really terrible for the environment to just like make a bunch of stuff for the sake of selling that stuff. So when it comes to salt, I wanna make like iconic staples. Like I wanna make the things that I'm like, this should exist. And if I can't think of a reason for it to exist, then I, I don't make it. So this left me with a dilemma because I do love every version of every color and it was really hard to choose. So recently I had the idea, what if I just take the the sort of primary colors of cosmetics in the sense of the colors that you use to make any color of makeup that you see what if i just put those straight into the formulas so you guys could adjust however you want so there's four sculpt and bronze adjusters and there's four lip and cheek adjusters the sculpt and bronze adjusters are white black red and ochre and those are the four oxides that make up every shade of foundation every shade of bronzer every shade of contour that you buy from salt or elsewhere I, that actually really blew my mind because if you guys saw the video which i'll link in the description box i made it years ago and i was explaining why <laughs> from a color theory perspective i'm quite perplexed by makeup artists and brands that talk about making colors for black people as if it is somehow more challenging or putting makeup on black people as if it is somehow more challenging. This video is like four years old now, but anyway, I just, I got out my primary colors like in my paints and I just showed like the process of, of making a color is not different for white people or black people. It's like, if you understand color theory, these are not, a, it's not a different skill. So I don't know what you're saying when you say you don't know how to do this, because if you know how to make shades for white people, you absolutely know how to make shades for black people. My theory <laughs> is that a lot of people, brands are lazy and they just don't want to because they don't think they have to. And then makeup artists that don't do makeup for black people are actually just bad makeup artists and they're not good at color theory, but they're able to use the plethora of shades for white people as a crutch because they don't actually have to understand color. There's just so many options. Anyway, point is mixing colors is mixing colors. It's not like some people are better at mixing greens and some, it's like, it's one type of skill that you can develop. And if you're interested in mixing colors or if you really like to get things to be just right, you know, it's really hard to find foundations that are olive enough. Or if you have light skin, it's really hard to find bronzers that are light enough. So. I wanted to give you the tools, the white, black, red, and ochre oxides, 
that you need to be able to adjust your foundation or adjust your bronzer exactly how you want it to be. Oh, I just tangented, but oh, the reason I brought up that old video was because in it, I used the primary colors that I use in painting to make any color. If you have white and black and you have a cooler and a warmer version of each primary color, not primary colors to do with light, but primary colors to do with actual pigment, blue, yellow, and red, you can make literally any color you can see. And so I showed that I mixed from blue, yellow, and red, and white and black with the cool and the warm versions of each. I matched a deep foundation and I matched a light foundation to just show like, this is how this works and it's not different. <laughs> but what fascinated me when I started formulating cosmetics was that you don't use blue, yellow, red, white, and black with a cool and a warm version of each to make foundation colors, there's like kind of a shortcut through iron oxides where you can mix any coolness or warmness or depth of complexion color with just the ochre and it's like a red rust and the white and the black oxides, which is that blew my mind. I love the way colors mix together. I love finding the shortcuts. It just fascinates me to no end. So I made those four colors and I put them in the Sculpt and Bronze formula. So it's the same texture, that kind of velvety skin-like finish. It's hydrating, but it's not greasy. And I just put those in there so you can mix them into literally whatever you want. And then for the lips and cheeks, I did white and black again, but in the lip and cheek formula because the formula is different. That one has a little bit, it's not tacky feeling if you've tried it, but it's tackier than the velvety finish that goes on like a bigger part of your complexion, like the Sculpt and Bronze, so that it feels also like hydrating on your lips and it lasts on your lips, which move more than the rest of your face. So it's got a, a shinier, glossier, tackier finish to it. So I made white and black for the purpose of making lip colors and blushes, and also a yellow shade and a blue shade that are specific to lip colors. I almost came out with reds, but again, I don't like to be redundant. And so with the lip and cheek colors we already have, those kind of serve as the red adjusters in that if you mix with any of those, you can pretty much make any lip color now, which I think is so cool. You can also like mix them together to make your own color from scratch. And you can also mix them with any other lip products that you own that have a compatible base formula. So when I introduced these on Instagram, you guys got really excited and there were a lot of requests for me to show how I might mix these. The options are unlimited, so I'll just stick to a few kind of like common things that I would probably do. When I made that color theory mixing video years ago, I remember thinking like, no one's gonna watch this. It's like 25 minutes long and it's just me mixing things and talking because I just fucking nerd out about this stuff so much. And it ended up being at the time one of my most viewed videos and I was so surprised because I didn't think anybody would care. And I'm excited to kind of dive into that again with you guys, cause I think it's the coolest thing in the world. We're also doing a stock up on tints sale right now. So a lot of you guys have asked over the last long time for a sale that is specific to just tints for those of you who are running out and you want to stock up again. We try to make the products affordable by doing like bundle discounts a lot so that you can, you know, make your bundle however you want it to be. But we haven't really had a, a tint specific thing for people who have run out and want to stock up on replacements and you already have a palette. If you use the code stock up right now, it's buy two, get one free just on tints. So, and that applies to the adjusters as well. So let's dive in to this world of beautiful colors. All right, hello. I think the easiest way to do this is just gonna to be to go through the questions that you guys asked on Instagram when I asked what you wanted to see in this video. So what we have here, this row is the lip and cheek adjusters and this row is the sculpt and bronze adjusters. Right in here in this mini palette, I have some colors that I thought would be fun to play with and I'll try to get to as much as so I can. So in the lip and cheek adjusters, this is the blue, the yellow, the white, and the black. And then in the Sculpt and Bronze, it's the red, the yellow, the black, and the white. And there were a few questions about the differences in formulas, which I already talked about a little bit. But basically, I formulated the Sculpt and Bronze to be really velvety and soft. So these have a much higher concentration of powders in them than the Lip and Cheeks. So the Lip and Cheeks, I wanted to be really comfortable and hydrating on the lips and also to stay put on the lips. So 
These have a blend of different waxes, synthetic beeswax, candelilla wax, and more oil in them. These, I wanted to have like a really velvet soft finish while still being hydrating. So these have just one wax, candelilla, which is a really hard but smooth wax. And they have kaolin clay and, and a higher concentration of silica. So you get that spreadability and that softness, but they also don't wear off easily. So these are gonna be a lot more comfortable on your skin if you're mixing them into complexion products like foundation or to make bronzer. Obviously the lip and cheeks are for the cheeks too, but usually you know, you're know you not putting it like on your whole face, like you're mixing it to your foundation or putting it all over your forehead and everything. You technically could, but it's gonna have a glossier, tackier finish than these, which are gonna have a more like soft skin finish. I'm gonna start off and I'm just gonna do some of the mixing requests that you guys asked for and explain what I'm doing as I do it. So, whoops, sorry, I bumped it. So somebody asked about mixing rose with the blue adjuster. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna kind of talk you through it. So you can do this like on the back of your hand as you go, or I highly recommend if you do your makeup, having a little palette and palette knife set up, especially if you are interested in color mixing and things like that but you can do it on your hand with your finger uh, or whatever tool you're using so you guys can see uh, you know like the quantities better and everything i'm going to use a palette the thing to know about the blue adjuster is that blue is so intense <laughs> blue pigment is the strongest pigment so we've got rose here and i'm gonna take blue in just like the tiniest little and i'm gonna put it to the side I'm not even gonna go straight in with it. And then just like add the littlest bit. So a couple tips about mixing colors that I wanted to share. A lot of people know that complementary colors neutralize one another. But another thing to think about is that big contrasts also neutralize each other. So since blue, you can see here, it's quite dark compared to rose. Blue is a pretty dark pigment right here. It's so much darker than rose. That part of it also has a dulling effect. So if you're, if you're mixing two extreme values, how am I trying to say this? When you're mixing colors, the more you mix, the duller the color will become eventually. If you keep mixing and mixing things forever, it's gonna start to become muddy. So that's why a lot of these pigments are pretty vibrant. Like you can see, this is like, it's a pretty vibrant blue. This is a, it's a, a vibrant yellow. That's to offset the, the dulling that can take place when you continue to mix different so things. So if you're gonna together. have a big jump in value, which is the lightness or darkness, that can kind of neutralize things. And also if you're gonna have a big jump in the hue and have complementary colors like orange and blue or red and green butting up against each other, then that's gonna also cause things to neutralize. So if you were trying to get something that's not as bright, or if you're trying to get something that's a more neutral version of a color, then you can use that to your advantage. And if you're trying to keep something vibrant, then you wanna do as little mixing as possible. So there's blue and yellow. Another person asked about seeing swatches just to get a sense of the opacity and everything. The, the pigmentation is identical to that of the products themselves. So I didn't change the percentage of pigment for the adjusters. It's so, gonna be the same that you're used to from the tints. It's the same texture and the same opacity. So these are the lip and cheek ones. Give you a good look, good look Okay, there. sorry, I always jump around when I'm talking about this. Let's keep adding blue in. So as I was saying, because blue is a lot darker than rose, this is going to give it more of a blue undertone, but it's also going to neutralize it a little bit. It's, not, it's gonna not be quite as bright. That's actually part of why I liked having blue in rose in the first place because I wanted rose to be like very soft and not. So there, there's, there is already this shade of blue in rose. But the more we put in it, the more mauve we're going to get. So let's compare those really quick. Here's rose. And then here's, if we add more blue in, this, ooh, it's actually really nice, this mauve color. Ooh, that is nice. Damn. 
I Someone like also that. said that they have raspberry and they wanted to know how they can make it more similar to spice, which is a great question. So raspberry is this gorgeous, cool toned, kind of fuchsia, magenta color. And if we wanna make this more like spice, which is a lot more neutral, a little, little more brown, yellow leaning than this, then that's gonna be a pretty simple job. So if we've got a purpley pink, the opposite of purple, yellow. So if we wanna neutralize this, we already know we gotta put some yellow in it, right? So mix some of yellow. It's gonna be really pretty. Mix some of yellow in. Beautiful. But we also know, right, yellow is really bright. So this is still a pretty vibrant color. We've shifted the undertone now, so it's no longer a magenta pink, but it's a more, almost like, Pretty similar to if rose was just darker. So if we want to make this not so bright now, white and black are really important, but in this instance, we don't really wanna change the value that much, right? So like I could neutralize this by putting a tiny bit of black in, but we also don't wanna make it a lot darker. So while blue is dark, it's not as dark as black. So if we put in a touch of blue and I mean I could do this without cheating but I also am kind of cheating because I did make these colors so I do know what's in spice and I can tell you that actually if you take raspberry and you put some of the yellow and the blue in it that pretty much is what's in spice so you now have spice this is pretty much what spice is so you can see there we go and I'll swatch it next to raspberry but now you have this kind of spice colored this raspberry. The last thing I'm gonna do with the lip and cheeks is I mentioned that I didn't come out with red adjusters for the lip and cheeks because we already have so many variants of red and I don't like to be redundant, but I thought cranberry would be a good chance to show you guys kind of how you could like make your own shade that you want. So I'll take a little bit of cranberry and maybe let's do something, let's do something really warm toned. So first of all, if you took cranberry and you mixed some white into it, you could get a really, really, really pretty pink. That's beautiful. And if you wanted to, you could make a really pretty peachy color by mixing some of the yellow adjuster and the white. That's a beautiful, beautiful soft coral. Beautiful. Beautiful muted coral color. <laughs> Just love colors, I do this all day. <laughs> As you can imagine, between the colors we already have and those, you can make so many different things. Now I wanted to show you guys a little bit about the Sculptin Bronze, so I'll show, I'll swatch these guys here. Again, it's the same amount of pigment as the Sculptin Bronze shades. We've got the red, the yellow, whoops. Black. And white. And salt lion. So I wanted to show you guys an example of using the bronzer light. Sometimes if people feel like they can't find a bronzer that's light enough for them, maybe in the winter time especially, you could mix this and again you could kind of do this like on the back of your hand or with your sponge or your brush as you're going but just taking a little bit of white and adding it into that you can per like adjust so easily as your tan fluctuates so great someone also asked how does it work using the adjusters for foundations 
since they're like balm cream based. So I figured I would show, I've been completely obsessed with the Fenty Beauty Ease Tint, which does not need to be adjusted for me at all, but I figured I would show you guys. It's the same um, as mixing a liquid adjuster. So if this was a little too pink for me, a really great solution would be to use the ochre shade, which is so, so, so good for pushing something more olive. And um, the, the formulas do, they're really compatible. So they'll, they'll blend right in. You just have to mix them. You know, it's like it's already, already mixed. And if it was, you know, especially if you have a hard time, like if you've got really light skin and a lot of foundations are too pink and too dark, mixing some of that ochre in and then mixing some of the white in, you could get such a great creamy ivory color that has the right undertone. I used to use special effects makeup to mix into complexion products for people. And they were essentially these shades. Another thing I used to do a lot would be if I wanted to mix a highlight color for a medium or deep foundation, you never want to mix white pigment into medium and medium deep and deep foundations. Uh, and that's a problem that a lot of times when you see a product that looks really ashy, it's because they've mixed white into it. From medium on, there's no white in our formulas. The only thing used to lighten is the ochre. And so one thing I found that works really beautifully when I would be doing someone's makeup and I wanted to put some more dimension in the complexion part of it, I would take the base and then I would mix an ochre shade into part of it and I would just let that be what lightens it instead of white and you maintain that like nice rich rich golden undertone for the highlight it's also a great way to adjust the depth of your foundation or your bronzer you would just use the ochre to lighten and then to deepen you could mix either the the red and the black or just the red depending on how warm you want it to be but let's do like here versus here so now you have this great like duo basically so i would just have like the foundation and then i had a perfect highlight for using on the cheekbones under the eyes through the center of the face all of that so again, you can mix this with concealer, our, our bronzers, other cream bronzers, and foundations. So if I wanted to take medium and say, say I want to make medium into a little deeper and a little more contour, I could just literally mix some of the black into it. And I'm going to get a really nice, cool toned, darker shade. So I can now take, I can take medium or I can take someone's base and I can evolve it into literally an entire um, sculpting set. So like if this was someone's base, I could use ochre and I could mix it into, now they've got a highlight, and I could use black and I could mix it into, now they've got a nice cool toned contour. And if I wanted to say, hey, I don't want to make it necessarily a contour that's darker, I want to make it just darker but with the same undertone, you know, maybe more of a bronzer, then I could have that little bit of black mixed in and then go in with a little bit of the red too to even it out. And deepen the base like that, or the bronzer. So it's like, no matter how picky you want to be, which I, I consider picky to be a positive. You can push and pull the warmth and the value in, in any direction you want with really any complexion products, which is super exciting. Also, with light, if you wanted to make that into more of an ashy contour, you could add a little bit of the black and white to it because you wouldn't want it to get too dark by adding a little black, but you could just put like a little bit of black and a little bit of white and you could make basically like our taupe shade, but for even lighter skin tones. So the options are pretty much limitless. I'll put this now next to this so you can see. Could have like a whole, whole set. 
so yeah, that's that's pretty much how I use the adjusters and I think they're really cool. I hope you found that helpful and if you guys have any more questions, feel free to let me know. All right, man. All right, I hope that was helpful. I really enjoyed it and I hope that you guys, you go forth and you make whichever colors your heart desires and you just freaking get in there and you just make it the exact right amount of blue that you wish it had. Don't forget about the stock up sale and we also have just a few of the spring duo left. So if you wanted to grab that, I would do it now because they're almost all gone. Feel free to like this video if you liked it and leave a comment with a question or just a nice little thought. And that's it. That's the end. Thank you for watching. I will see you later. Bye.